Welcome to another Tableau tutorial video. I'm Weston Palmer. Let's get started. In Tableau 2020, they have a new feature called Buffer. And what that does is Buffer will draw a range around a point and then will allow you to identify other locations within that boundary. It, what we're looking at here is we're looking at incidents of wildfire in Utah and we're, look, we're thinking about establishing another uh, fire base. And so this is the boundaries around that fire base and allows you to identify which base might be best suited for this incident. You could also use it with comp competition if you're opening a new store. I've seen that. Uh, let me walk you through this. It's a little involved. It uses this as the function buffer and make point. I'm going to start by, I've pulled in a list of the wildfires that have occurred over time. Now, this other table here has additional information about that wildfire. So I'm going to bring it over, and this was one of the first things I ran into. It's unable to complete the action. Uh, uses a connection that doesn't support logistical, logical tables. Add a single logical table, open it, and add the table to the layer physical layer of the data source. So after I went to the, the help, what you do is you double click and then you have, you can pull that over like you would in the past. And we'll come in here and pull this in unit ID. Okay, we're not actually going to use this. We'll come down here to the latitude and longitude. I'm just getting it prepped right now. We're going to filter it to just Utah and then also to just a particular year. And we'll bring state over to the detail. Actually, I probably wanted to bring state over to the filter. And we want more than just that one dot. We want actually all the fires. So that's the and you'll know your data better here. So, you, I mean, we don't need, I'll fast forward through this. And we want to change it so that it's a little bit more intuitive. So gold, I'm going to assign the palette and okay. And so now you can see where the, the really hot fires are. All right, that's stage one. We've got the fires located. Now we want to add in the, the fire stations, potential fire stations. Really basic. I just have the location, a city, a state, longitude, and latitude. Now, I ran into some problems with this. For whatever reason, Excel keeps, when I pull it over to Tableau, it keeps registering this as a text. So I'll show you how we get around that in just a second. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Let me add the, the data source real quick. All right, so we want to bring over fire stations. Let's come over here and show you the field. Oh, it did come across. It looks like it came across as latitude. Okay. Uh, what I did was I had the latitude and longitude and I took it and multiplied it by one, negative one. Or no, just by one. You'll notice that it shows up three times for each uh, fire location. That's not really what we want. So we're going to come in here and we're going to actually change this to a create a join location. And this is going to be called make point and we're going to use the latitude and longitude from the fire location Oops. and the longitude so now that is a point and now once we have this as a you'll see there's a little exclamation point when we pull this open now there's another option because now we have it I don't fully understand this, but a spatial or a, uh, spatial reference. So we can have where that intersects, and this is where we're going to create this join calculation. 
sorry, I should have made this a little bit bigger for you. This is where we're going to say, this is the buffer function. We want to draw a boundary around a data point. And what data point do we want to use? We're going to do another make point. And yeah, we'll do longitude. Okay, you'll see here that it's not, a, it's not showing as geometry or uh, geographical location. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to change this to... Actually, let's just try it. I'm not sure if it matters here. Now, let's get rid of this other item. Can you see in the formula, the little helper text over here, it says, now that we've got the geometry there, we've got that point, how many do we want, how big do we want it to be? Well, let's just say 100, and this is in the units. So you could be miles, actually, miles or meters or feet or whatever, depending on the scale. We're looking at the whole state, so we want this to be 100 miles. We're going to say that's the, the, the reference area, the service area. So let's see if this works. That didn't work, so we're going to have to come in here and we're going to have to actually put float around the longitude and latitude. And actually, just to be sure, I'm going to move these. Okay, while that was grinding away, I was just thinking the hardest part is getting the longitude and latitude information. All right, so now you, can, you can't you can really tell, but you can kind of tell that the uh, wildfire fires have been limited to 100 miles within those three potential fire bases. So let's get the fire bases up on the chart. So what we're going to do... So we're going to do a create a calculated field, and I'm just going to call this, make this a little bigger, we're going to call this service area. And actually, before we do that, just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to create lat for the fire base. And then lat for, uh, longitude for the fire base. And all I'm doing here with this float is that's converting it to a decimal. And this is making sure that if it's, for some reason, it's being picked up as text, it will be converted into a decimal. All right. Now let's create that uh, range, service range. And here's that, we're gonna use that formula again, the buffer formula. We're creating a buffer around a data point. So buffer, make point, and we're going to use Firebase lat and fire, uh, longitude for the Firebase. Okay, so that's that first portion. That's the data point. So how long do we want it to be around? Well, we said 100 miles. So let's say 100 miles. And this is case sensitive, so make sure that you have a lower case there. And so that's our range. So we're going to have a new sheet. We've got the Firebase Latitude. Yeah, we're going to bring the longitude over. So we got one single point. We're going to change that to, to map. And then we're going to need to bring over the fire station. Fire station location, because that's going to give you differences. And now we're going to bring over the 
service range. We're going to drop that on to details. And now you have the three ranges. Well, that's great, but you'd also like to see the fires to see, you know, how that, just to see how they look. So let's go back to sheet one. And now we're going to have to make a dual axis map. And I know this was tricky for me to remember. So we're going to come over, we're going to bring another latitude over from fires, right? So now you're going to have two maps. Now on one of these maps, we'll pick this one, we're going to bring the service range, we're going to drop that on to details, and then we're going to get rid of the fire class, fire IPD, and state. And we still need to put in the location, it's only showing the one. So we need to bring over location so that it picks up all three. You see all three locations there. Service range. Oh, we need to change this to map because this will, there we go. But we need to change this to map because this isn't a circle. This is actually going off of, uh, because it's miles, latitude, longitude, it's looking at a range. We're going to combine these two together right click on the dual axis and let's come in here and actually you can see that the dual the uh, the range is on top let's actually switch that by grabbing this to the left and just moving it over to the right to the left okay and we're going to change the color a little bit and wash it out a little bit more all right so that's a good start what we'd like to do is there's another thing we can do. We're going to create a calculated field. This is going to be distance to base. And what we're going to do here is this is to identify how far away the fires are from the different fire bases. Uh, there's a distance function. And we're going to do the start point. So we're going to have to do make point again. This is going to be your, you're going to see a recurring theme here. So we're going to do the fire location first. So that's just latitude. And then we're also going to do the longitude for the fire. And now we need to do the second. Let's see, make point. And we're going to do another latitude for the fire base. We're going to try this one. You can see there's a little bit screwy. And now I'm just going to make it a little expand it. And we are, where are we at here? There's comma, bracket, bracket. Okay, so then we're going to do miles. Because that's what we want the distance. Apply OK. We're going to come down here to where the fire is and we're going to put distance to base under tool tip. So now when you hover over it, distance to base 39.1, that looks right. How is it going to react if we go somewhere in the where it overlaps? So we've got 192. Well, the range is only 100, so it can only be 100 at the most. You can see here it's summing up the distance between those two because there's two fire bases that it hits against. It's adding them together. So I played around with it. I did average, but I think what really what I want to do when you're talking about a fire, let's do minimum. So you get the minimum distance to your base, the fire base. So there's 2594. All right, now the next thing that we would like to do is identify how many fires are actually in each of these circles. How much coverage do each of these proposed bases have? So let's uh, do another calculated field. And we'll call this fires covered. And we'll get to this, why we're doing this here in just a second. 
make this a little bigger. I'm going to say if, what did we say, distance to base is less than or equal to 100 miles, we don't have to add miles, it's just 100, then we're going to add 1, else 0. All right, and we want this for, we want this for the entire circle. So there's going to be a lot of different fires, and if there's a fire is less than 100 miles, we're going to give it a 1 and add it up. Otherwise, it'll be a 0. So now, we're going to come back to this item here. This is the range. This is the range. The way I can tell it's the range is because it doesn't have the color. So we're going to bring the fires covered and drop that on label. And we're actually going to make that a little bit bigger so we can read it. And so now you can see how many fires are covered by each potential fire base. And I'm going to show the filter here. So let's get rid of Northern Utah. It kind of flips back and forth and it zooms in. To avoid that, come over here to the pin, just pin it. And now when you unselect something, it'll just disappear. And so this would tell you that if you want to cover the most fires, you'd want to put one in central, in the central location. You can do a lot of other things with this, but this gives you the basics on how to use buffer, make point, uh, distance, a lot of other cool things. Key is, once again, you got to have the, the data ahead of time. Got to have the longitude and latitude ahead of time. Drop me a line. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Hope you found that video helpful. Hit subscribe and the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. And check out my other videos to learn even more about Tableau.